the Detroit Windsor Tunnel, the first and only underwater vehicular tunnel to connect two countries, has served travelers between Detroit, Michigan and Windsor, Ontario for 81 years. Completed in 1930, the tunnel under the Detroit River was designed by Parsons Brinkerhoff for the Detroit and Canada Tunnel Company, which financed the venture with private capital. Parsons Brinkerhoff continues to be associated with the tunnel, now jointly owned by the cities of Detroit and Windsor, providing engineering and advisory services. Over the years, the Detroit Windsor Tunnel, we have elected to employ Parsons Brinkerhoff for their professional services, and we have been very pleased with the service that we have received from Parsons Brinkerhoff and the relationship that we have cultivated on various projects that will assist the Detroit Windsor Tunnel to become the premier border crossing in this particular area. Today, the tunnel serves 28,000 travelers daily who rely on it for fast, efficient transportation between the two countries. The tunnel's history began in 1919 when the mayors of Detroit and Windsor proposed building a tunnel between their cities for automobiles and streetcars. The idea languished until it found an advocate in Fred Martin, a Salvation Army captain from Windsor who was determined to see the tunnel built. In 1926, Martin went to the New York offices of Parsons Brinkerhoff, Clapp and Douglas and suggested that they undertake the project. The firm agreed to design the tunnel and supervise its construction, but bankers provided the financing only after the firm's founder, William Barclay Parsons, guaranteed the $25 million cost. The tunnel would be built by the Park Lab Construction Corporation, an arm of Parsons Brinkerhoff and other contractors. In September of 1928, construction began. Three distinct methods were used to build the Detroit Windsor Tunnel. For the approaches on either side of the river, an open trench was excavated in which the tunnel was then constructed and covered over. This is known as cut and cover tunneling. For the section that connected the land approaches with the underwater tubes, workers known as sand hogs dug the tunnel by hand. Around them, a huge hollow steel cylinder was jacked forward by eight to 10 feet a day as the earth was cut away. Beneath this shield, a steel lining was then installed as the permanent tunnel structure. The most dramatic and innovative construction method employed immersing nine giant steel tubes in the bed of the Detroit River forming a nearly half-mile-long underwater section of the tunnel. The steel tubes had been fabricated in Ontario and towed to the construction site. There, a barge positioned them above the trench that had been dug and leveled at the bottom of the Detroit River. The 8,000-ton tubes were sunk to the trench, where divers connected them with giant steel pins. Finally, the tubes were covered over with 20 feet of fill. When the time came to link the ends of the immersed tube tunnel section with the shield-driven tunnel sections, the connection was made with less than one inch of error. It's just amazing. Within an inch, you know, these huge sections, and then they just connected through that shield-driven portion and connect to a huge, huge cylinder that was just sunk from, from the top of the river and be that close, I mean, an inch, that's it. Amazing! The Detroit Windsor Tunnel was one of the earliest tunnels to employ the immersed tube construction method, and it has served as a model for many similar tunnels since. Just two years after its groundbreaking, the mile-long tunnel opened to traffic, allowing motorists to make the trip between the United States and Canada in just three minutes. Five decades later, in 1984, it would be declared an historic civil engineering landmark by the American Society of Civil Engineers. Through the years, the tunnel has been upgraded and rehabilitated, and Parsons Brinkerhoff has been a key contributor to that work. Really the story for us over the last 10, 11 years has been 
niche projects focused on their ability to turn to us and our ability to give them the expert they need to the extent they need it and deliver the projects for them. A lot of what we do, they're not big projects, they're by no means a mega, a mega project on anybody's scale, but they're very important to the tunnel and they, they like that we're able to bring small scale services with really global expertise and deliver those projects efficiently and move on. Every year the tunnel gets inspected and, and we were part of that. We did some inspection in the land portion of the tunnel in the roadway beams area and then also in the roof beams area. And then we also did some inspection of the intermediate columns within the roadway section. Currently, we're working on waterproofing the top of the tunnel at the Detroit portal in order to try to stop some of the water infiltration that's coming in from above. For eight decades, the Detroit Windsor Tunnel has served as a critical link between two great nations. Well, I think this project is a legacy. Think of how many decades of different engineers in different disciplines through Parsons Brinkerhoff that have been intertwined with this project in one way or another. I'm so proud to be able to say that I'm involved with the Detroit Windsor Tunnel.